This is for all you multi-talented, multitasking, multi-everything people out there. Take it away. Find your glory, write your story, fearless people. Enjoy your Zola. <laughs> no applause? <laughs> You're all fired. <laughs> now that you've reached the stage in your life where quality television is important, Nubian TV is a black network that speaks to your lifestyle. Nubian TV is the world's first digital network devoted to the upscale and political lifestyles of black people. Nubian TV's programming includes politics, travel, fashion, food, automotive, arts and culture, civil rights, music, and more. Watch now on Amazon Fire TV, Roku, or watch globally at NubianTV.net. Nubian TV, it's what you want to watch. Caesar. Just look at him. Politician, general, author, ruler, man. Legend has it, he's not only stared into the belly of the beast, he's had it for dinner. Here he's free to relax, or party, or relax, or party, or relax, and party. His is a world of opulence. And the occasional impulse buy. Not one to rest on his laurels, he's famous for ushering in a new age of entertainment. So, for anyone seeking a place where the sun never sets on a good time, all this awaits. I am Caesar, and I approve this palace. Well, hello, 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 hello to you, 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 and you. Welcome into another edition of Braylon Lee's virtual tour live. I do just want to say, before we get started, shout out to Queen Sheba, darling. Um, great, great job, sister, as you often do. Um, y'all, if y'all have never seen the Queen Sheba interview, she throws down. You her, she really does. Um, I am in the middle of it, and I will say that, um, you know, some stuff I'm not surprised about. Um, I haven't got through it all the way. But um, I will tell you, tomorrow night, we're talking about it all live. And I'm going to bring this with a different angle, that media perspective with soul that y'all have come so used to know. Uh, so looking forward to that. But Queen Sheba, great, great job for what I've seen so far. Um, y'all know my rule on Thursdays. I usually don't go live. That's my rest day. That and Saturdays, unless I see a deep dive that I want to do. But while I was at work, I was talking to a coworker, and I got a notification. Not a notification, but a notification that it is correctly called, or the correct pronunciation for notification um, is pronounced. Um, that O.J. Simpson passed away. Um, 
I said normally on Thursdays, I do not go live. But if something is happening in the culture, we will go live on tour. So with that being said, higher is waiting, lower is available, lower is available. But either way, we are live on tour. Let me take down the psychotic intro. You see the virtual tour background. You do, you do. You hear the virtual tour music, and then there is me. Hey, everybody, welcome in. Glad to have all you here. Um, you know, this news today just it came right out the blue. Um and I know that today is a day for a lot of people. Um, you know, Ron Goldman responded. Um, the attorney for Nicole Brown um responded, Cato Kalen responded. Um, there are some people today that are happy that he passed away. There are some people that are sad that he passed away. Um, for those of you who don't know, um, OJ um, had a 30 for 30 um, documentary, OJ Made in America, that came out in 2016. Um, it was a five part documentary series about him. It won many awards. Um, it was a riveting, riveting documentary and basically what it goes through that documentary is the football success the television acting career the relationship with nicole brown the domestic abuse the murder of nicole and ron goldman and the trial and the racial tensions it was very well done and this story combines so many different things. It combines culture, it combines crime, it combines drama, it combines social climate. And I felt like going live and talking about it. Um, because I was born on August 10th, 1994. Um, and OJ Simpson, he was born He was born in um, 1947. So when he started his, you know, football career and things of that energy, he was let me see, the professional career. So he was the first selection in the 1969 AFL-NFL draft. And so he was a very, very big football player. And so then, you know, he began an acting career. Um, he did um, uh, un untelevised two hour long film project called the frogman that was completed in 1994. so i was born in 1994 right so so when i was born um all he had was an unaired tv movie i did not know oj simpson as the football player i didn't know any of this all i knew was this black man who murdered off his ex-wife allegedly and this guy that he thought was the you know lover right and when i watched that documentary let me show you how oj made in america in case you guys did not know let me pull up here and i want you guys to give your perspective on oj what did you remember about the trial you know we are very we are very cultural um topical channel over here and so this was the oj made in america um documentary so it was it was a very very big thing it was very it was you see on Rotten tomatoes the approval rating had a hundred percent um it was a very it, it was a very diverse film it really was it really really was so um, like i said i know that today um there were many many responses and so we are going to get to that so for those of you who may not know um his family announced the passing on the official twitter account after balance prostate cancer um on april 10th um our father orval simpson um succumbed to his battle with cancer he was surrounded by his children and grandchildren during this time of transition, his family asked that you please respect their wishes for privacy and grace. Um, 
and this is the thing too i would say to everybody right i know ron goldman and um nicole's family are feeling them are feeling how they're feeling they have every right to feel the way that they feel and the fans are feeling the way that they're feeling the people that feel that were a oj did this um it's a lot of emotions today it really really is and so like i said the trial really made for court tv that created uh, cases on live tv it really did says here i don't i don't think most of america believes i did simpson told the new york times in 1995 a week after a jury determined that he did not off brown and goldman i've got thousands of letters and telegrams from people supporting me 12 years later after an outpouring of of public rage were um, Rupert murdoch canceled a planned book um by a news corp on hopper collins News Corp is Rupert Murdoch. Rupert Murdoch is or was a part of Fox, um, in which Simpson offered his hypothetical account of the illings. It was to be titled If I Did It. Lord Jesus. So this article comes to us from ESPN. So yeah, it's it's definitely a lot for sure. Um, let me get to. Okay, so here's some exclusive details here from TMZ. Kato Kalen, who was a key witness during the O.J. Simpson trial, um, just posted a video responding to the news and sends his thoughts and prayers to O.J.'s children, as well as the families of the victims, including Nicole Brown Simpson. TMZ app, your source for the biggest celebrity and entertainment news in the palm of your hand. Get 24-7 access to the exclusive news, pics, and video only TMZ can provide. Download the TMZ app today. I've been asked to comment on the death of O.J. Simpson. Foremost, I'd like to express my condolences to the children, to Sydney, and to Justin, to Jason and Arnell. They lost their father and that is never easy. I wish to express my love and compassion to the Goldmans, to Fred and to Kim. I hope you find closure. And finally, to the family of the beautiful Nicole Brown Simpson. May we always cherish her memories. Nicole was a beacon of, of light that burned bright. May we never forget her. So that was from Kato Kalen there. Gloria Allred, who rep Nicole Brown Simpson's family during the trial, tells TMZ Simpson's death reminds us that the legal system, even 30 years later, is still failing battered women and that the power of celebrity men to avoid true justice for the harm that they inflict on their wives or significant others is still a major obstacle to the right of women to be free of the gender violence to which they are still subjected she adds my heart goes out to the children of oj simpson to the very brave family of nicole bronson simpson the truth about O.J. Simpson can never be erased. It should never be forgotten. O.J. Simpson, OJ Simpson is dead. May his victims finally rest in peace. The Goldman's attorney, David Cook, tells TMZ, O.J. died without penance, adding that while he may be gone, his multi-million dollar judgment is not. And the Goldman's are interested in discerning what money and assets that he may have left behind that they can collect. So that is... Um, Kim and that's Kim and Fred Goldman. Cook goes on to say that they'll be exploring their options now that OJ Simpson is dead, including figuring out where, whether that whether he left behind a fund with his estate that they can pounce on. 
Caitlyn Jenner, who used to be close friends with OJ, tells TMZ, um, good riddance. Uh, she has posted to Twitter. One of the lead detectives uh, who worked on the OJ uh, murder case tells TMZ, I have nothing to say. I simply don't care. So. <coughs> Ooh, man. And this is Cato Kalen here. And so he tagged all of these people. <laughs> so basically, this is his one and done statement. He ain't doing no interviews on this at all. He ain't doing no interviews. Um, of course, DL covered it there. Poor Chloe. Um, Dana Carty. Um, OG Simpson. Died, you mean the first running back to rush 2,000 yards of the season? So, those are some of the replies to OJ passing away. This is what um, this is what Fred Norman um, said it is no great loss to the world. The death of OJ Simpson immediately drew reaction around the country Thursday, renewing public interest in the era defining 1995 murder trial. Reviving painful memories for the families who were close to the events. Simpson was acquitted of murdering his ex wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her friend Ron Goldman, capping off what legal analysts described at the time as the trial of the century. Ron um, Goldman's father, Fred Goldman, told NBC News that the news of Simpson's death only further underscored his grief for his son, who was found stabbed to death outside Brown Simpson's home. In Los Angeles on June 12, 1994, the only thing I have to say is it's just further it's just further reminder of Ron being gone all these years. Fred Goldman said in a phone interview, it's no great loss to the world. It's a further reminder of Ron being gone. Alan Dershowitz, the prominent lawyer who served as an advisor on Simpson's legal dream team alongside the legendary Johnny Cochran and F. Lee Bailey, told NBC News that he was saddened to learn that his one-time client had died. I knew he was very sick, so I'm upset that he died, Dershowitz said. I've got to know him very well during the trial. He was, it was one of the most diverse trials in American history, along with racial lines. He will always be remembered for the Bronco chase, for the glove, and for the acquittal. Marsha Clark, a former um, Los Angeles deputy um, a deputy district attorney who was the lead prosecutor in the Simpson murder case, released a short statement. I send my condolences to Mr. Simpson's family. In an exclusive interview with Keith Slomnick, Nicole Brown Simpson's ex boyfriend, Simpson's death was a relief. Um, Solstrich served at the Paul Bear at the funeral. I think there's some. I think there's finally some sort of justice that has been served that he's been taken from the earth, so I'm just sad. So it doesn't bring the coal back, but it means he can no longer be who he is in this world. So a lot of people commenting here. And I know some of you guys are probably saying, Well, Braylon, why are you covering that? Like, well, this is what we do. You know, we um we cover what is happening in the world. Um, in real time and um, like I said a lot of people a lot of people today feel the way that they feel some people are happy today that he has passed away um, some people are not um, hey lady B welcome in yeah there are a lot of people saying that today lady B and you know like I said hang on y'all I'm sorry this little knot is not cool with me. <laughs> um, and, you know, like I said, on Thursdays, I normally don't go live. But if it's something happening in the culture, we go live about it, right? Um, this is a day in history. I know that a lot of sports people on YouTube um, are giving their commentary on it. I know that the people who believe um, OJ is innocent is covering it. A lot of people who believe that he's guilty is celebrating it. We have to recognize the reality. Um, but OJ also is a father. Um, he has two kids. And he also 
he also has two grown kids. So, so speaking of um, those kids, here is an article um, about where our OJ Simpson kids now. So, our Nail Simpson is fifty-five. That's our nail there. Um, so our nail remained a vocal support of her father speaking out during his. 2017 parole hearing following his jail sentence for a 2007 armed robbery at a Las Vegas hotel. So basically that Las Vegas robbery, if you guys may not remember, it was basically a deal gone wrong um, over some sports memorabilia. And um, he took a pow pow into the room and tried to force the person to give back his um, value. So um, at the time, she asked that her dad be released so her family could move forward. As a family, as a family, we recognize he's not the perfect man, but as a man, as a father, he has done his best um, to behave in a way that speaks to his overall nature and character. She said after describing him as her best friend, Jason Simpson, um, 53 years old. I'm thinking that's Jason right there. Um, Simpson and Whitley's um, second child, Jason, was born in 1970. Um, was by his dad's side during these during important moments of his career, including when he was inducted into the Bill Buffalo Bills Wall of Fame at Bridge Stadium in 1980. He also attended the premiere of Naked Gun 33-1-3, um, the final assault along his, alongside his father, rather, Nicole, and two younger siblings three months before Nicole's murder. After the infamous police chase where the authorities were tailing a white Ford Bronco containing Simpson, and his friend and former teammate Al Callens. Jason met his father at his brick home and tried to speak to him. Jason was handcuffed by the police at the time and led back, to, led back into the house. Um, per the Los Angeles Times, that's 2016, Jason was living a private life as a chef at a Atlanta, rest at Atlanta restaurant, St. Cecilia. So St. Cecilia, I think that is a... Um, town in Italy. Let me let me make sure y'all because I, I don't want to be wrong. But I think that is um, a town in Italy. Yeah. That is um Saint Cecilia was a Roman virgin martyr. Um it was venerated cat Catholic um, Orthodox and Anglican and some Lutheran churches. So she was born in Rome in Italy. So I knew it was Italy. Um, so Aaron Simpson, Simpson and Whitley welcomed their third child, daughter Aaron, in 1997. Um, just one, one month of her second birthday, Aaron tragically drowned in a pool. Simpson really discussed the incident in public. Um, Sydney Brooke uh, Simpson, um, who was right here, is 38 years old. Um, Sydney OJ and Nicole's first child again was born on October 17th, 1985. She was only eight years old when her mom died. It was helped raised by her aunt and Nicole's sister, Tanya Brown, after Nicole's death. I did try to look at the statement from Tanya Brown. I have not seen anything um, at all. Um, Sydney and Justin moved to Florida in 2000, six years after their mom's death, and have lived in relatively relative anonymity since Sydney graduated from Boston University in 2010 with a degree in uh, sociology and spent time in Atlanta before she moved to St. Petersburg, Florida. As of 26, April 2016, Sydney works in real estate as an owner of multiple properties in Florida that she oversees per the Tampa Bay Times. That same year in February 2016, Sydney and her brother Justin attended the wedding of their cousin, um, Sean Brown, who is Nicole's sister um, Denise Brown's son um, in Newport Coast, California. They were photographed at the ceremony as he wed Laguna Beach's Casey Reinhardt. And then Justin Ryan Simpson, 35, so that's Justin there. Justin's old, OJ's youngest child, Justin, was born August 6, 1988. He was five years old when his mother was murdered outside the house as he slept. Like his sister, Justin works in real estate and as of 2016 was employed by a Carwell banker. 
he's an agent based in St. Petersburg. He tell me Tampa Bay Times is a great place to live. Why not St. Pete? It's, it's gorgeous here. In February 2022, just announced on his Instagram that he was expecting um, a child with his partner, a baby girl they named Lana. We are extremely excited, scared, nervous, and in, and in love. He captured the post. In a few, in only a few short months, we'll be welcoming Laura Lana. I can't wait for you to meet her. So those are the children um, of O.J. Simpson there. And um, like I said, they lost their dad. Um, like I said, today is a day in history, and that's why I'm recording this. Um, I know some people could probably give two dams about it, but you know i think for us being the cultural channel that we are we cover the news as it happens so um so yeah i just want to come on to break that like i said the uh queen sheba interview with winter harris will be happening tomorrow night at 6 p.m right here on this channel so please look forward to that um was watching the um, interview before I'm coming on here and i was at work at the time so i did drop in to say hey but i could not stay long um but i could tell from the chat that a lot of people were pissed at carlos king so that's why i do what i do bring that media with soul perspective um but yeah so see articles here oj simpson race injustice is the debate that won't go away why his death is nothing to celebrate oj simpson was my childhood hero then i thought he was a murderer so as you can see a lot of people are giving their perspectives um my fellow black students celebrating um oj getting away with murder not me mm. wow, wow, wow. for those of you who may not remember um there was a you guys know the oprah winfrey show was on right and so oprah Woo! Oprah, o Oprah did a. Um, oh, wait a minute! 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 This is some news here. Well, before before this, Oprah did a live show, right? And so what she did was she broadcasted the trial in studio, and when the trial ended and the verdict was reached, right when the verdict was reached, of not guilty the white audience members were worldly pissed the black audience members overjoyed themselves um that show is still remembered as one of the most pivotal shows for the oprah free show so with that being said here is this here um literally this guy announced the same day as this passing i'm nicole brown simpson doc in the works at lifetime target to be a two-night summer event news of life and murder nicole brown simpson comes amid the death of oj simpson the horror reporter um, has learned um, that brown simpson who was famously um, found murdered in 1994 outside her Brickwood condominium along with her friend Ron Goldman who and his late ex-husband OG Simpson was accused of obviously acquitted the murder charges is the subject of what is going to be a two-night event titled the life and murder of Nicole Brown Simpson news of the doc comes amidst the announcement that OJ Simpson died one day prior at the age of 76 from cancer his family and who, who announced his death on social media on April 11th, that's today. Um, so the football player turned actor who then became best known for the high profile 1994-1995 um, 
murder trial was surrounded by his children and grandchildren at the time of his death. Um, li the life and murder of Nicole Brown Simpson has been in the works for more than a year. And as the High Report understands, it's centered around the Nicole Brown Simpson story in a bid to reclaim her narrative. The project is pegged to the 30 year anniversary of her death. More than 50 participants said to have known her best, including her sisters, close family, and friends, are participating in the docuseries, which is said to include exclusive archival video and unprecedented family access. Cole Brown Simpson and OJ Simpson were married for seven years and shared two children, Sydney and Justin. The fallen football star was later found liable for the deaths of Cole Brown and Goldman in 1997. Civil lawsuit, the docuseries had been targeted for a June release, but that they could inch closer with the news of OJ's death. The life and murder of Nicole Brown Simpson is a project in Lifetime Stop Against Stop Violence Against Women Initiative, which also counts the recently announced, um, announced Roger Gaslit by my husband, the Morgan Metzer story, which is based on the true story of Morgan Ron Metzer, who will be played by Jada Kramer and Austin Nicholas. Lifetime most recently launched the event docs where is Wendy Williams and the prison confessions of Gypsy Rose Blanchard, which were each big red cross for the cable. So there you go. Like I said, if anything, this is more, this live is not really um, for anything else other than really just to give y'all the platform because like i said i was born in 1994 so the football career all that stuff i had no idea um the and like i said being in the 90s at that time like i was in elementary school and my childhood slide time live you know cartoon network <laughs> disney channel and so um and so yeah it was really it, it, to me i just didn't know I didn't know um, or know of him really. And so I really learned the magnitude of um, OJ, everything that happened during that um, documentary of OJ in America. So. Okay, well, here it is here. Um, the Pro Football Hall of Fame um, has issued a statement. Um, the Pro Football Hall of Fame has managed to do the impossible, um, issuing a lengthy press release that focuses on his football career, points to his set career acting and broadcasting, and takes great, great pains to point out that he's enshrined in Canton for his on-field contributions. It also fails to it also fails to mention for the thing that which he is best known. It is an important it's a, it's appropriate to recall me, his many accomplishments as a player, but there is a significant complication to his story that can't be ignored. He was tried for double murder, and the evidence of guilt was overwhelming. He was acquitted. He was then found responsible in civil court for wrongful death of both victims. He was laid, he later went to prison for nearly nine years on unrelated charges. It's unclear why the Hall of Fame decided not to make um, even passing reference to the all the all field realities realities of his life. Was all field behavior did not prompt his removal from the Hall of Fame. The Hall of Fame should not pretend those things didn't happen. For OJ Simpson, nothing more significant. Nothing is more significant than the unsolved double, double murder that many, if not most, believe believe he committed. And that civil trial found him responsible for his name is synonymous with that crime. The fact that he has that should change that we all will have a new legacy. Simpson's legacy including the killing, includes the killing of Nicole Brown, Ron Goldman, 
mentioning those crimes is not disrespect. Simpson omitted them from his obituary. Absolutely disrespects his victims. So that is from Pro Football Talk. There. So, like I said to y'all, this is this is a cultural um, this is a cultural day today with this passing. So. Right here, Bob Costas um, talked about it as well. He was not just admired, but beloved. Costas told CNN he was, if not not the first, he was the first to do it a big way, an African-American who broke through. Um, although he was known as an accomplished athlete on the, and, and one of the handful of the greatest running backs in the history of college football, then NFL Simpson also became a household name for his appearance in movies and variety commercials, including a um, famous 1987 Hertz car commercial, rental commercial, showing Simpson running through an airport. The commercial was Go OJ Go because OJ was the fastest running back in the country at the time, and so the fast speed service of Hertz. Um, everything about him, people feel it more or less. On sports analyst Christine Brennan calls Simpson the American icon transcendent into sports. We see now with athletes today, be it Caitlin Clark recently or the course time bracer in the woods, LeBron James, I can go on. The first name um, basis that we're on with these athletes, the fact that we absolutely we, the fact that we absolutely expect to see them on commercials where it's also in it. This to me really started with the OJ and Hurts commercials. Even people who didn't watch sports or knew him as an athlete recognized who Simpson was, she added. I knew him to be an athlete, but I also knew him to be a pitch man that crossover appeal into every living room. So even if you didn't love football, you knew OJ because of his ability to transcend sports and of course become the businessman pitchman that he was. So So, a lot of people. Hey, Swamp Talk. If the glove doesn't fit, you must have quit. That was said by the legendary Johnny Cochran there. Um, like I said, I know that this live um, is a little bit different, you know. Um, I know that some of y'all were like, wait a minute, Braille covering OJ, but y'all know we are a very cultural channel. By the way, Swamp Talk, I hope that your live at 1 o'clock went well. I was at work um, at the time, but I did drop by to say hey, show some love there. Um, like I said, this is more of a cultural life than anything else. Um, I'm letting y'all have y'all voice on it because, like I said, I only knew of OJ based on the um, OJ Made in America uh, documentary series. So that was that was that for me. But I'm just giving the perspective of um, everybody um, who has been speaking today. So I have been, 
So I have been looking for um, for a statement from Tanya Brown, and I have not um, I have not seen anything from um, Tanya Brown today. I have not seen anything. So, and she may not say anything today. You know what I mean? So, hey Nikki News, welcome in. We're just chilling. Um, like I said, this is more of a cultural live today. Um, you know, we cover anything and everything happening in the culture. Um, we are going to cover the Queen Sheba. Um, because I know everybody was like, Brian, you should be covering the Queen Sheba thing. Um, for one, I was at work. So when I do a review, I do a review. Um, you know what I mean? So I am in the middle of it. I'm taking my notes. And um, like I said, I will be reviewing it tomorrow night at six o'clock. Um, so looking forward to that. Of course, y'all saw the 11 a.m. show I got for y'all. But um, covering that, um, that needs to be its own thing. It does. Because um, like I said, Queen Sheba, I know she does hot topics as well. Um, but, you know, we try to be, we, we're a cultural channel over here. So as soon as I saw the news, I'm like, I know I don't even normally go live on Thursdays, but this is a cultural moment today. Um, and I know that there are other people talking about it as well. So all I'm doing today is I'm just giving y'all the story of this, giving y'all the perspectives that y'all speak on. Because like I said, at 1994, I was, I was born August 7th, 1994. So I was a baby during all this time, you know, of the Bronco chase and everything else. When I got older, I heard of all the OJ um, references and, you know, the skits and everything. That's why I was like, oh, my God, this dude. Um, so, yeah. So that's what this is today. It's more of a cultural. Um, yeah, it's more of a cultural. Um, more of a cultural life. Today. Hmm. Excuse me. Sorry, y'all. So it looks like, um, oh, wait a minute. So it looks like the Washington Examiner reached Tanya Brown, OJ Simpson, OJ Simpson, um, sister in law, for comment. Okay, so here it is here. Because I was trying to find the statement. Um, hey, Sheila Williams, welcome. And yes, OJ did pass away today. Like I said, this is more of a cultural life today. Um, you know what I mean? This is not. And, and, and let me tell you all how I found out, right? So I was at work today. And literally, you know, my phone on your on your phone, um, you get um, news notifications, right? And so, literally, it just came through um, at ten fifteen this morning for me. And I said to my coworker that, um, "Yeah, I gotta go live um, because normally, y'all know my rule: I don't go live. I don't go live. Um, you know what I mean?" But if something is happening in the culture, we will start up the car and go on tour. And so um, I knew that. I knew that today that when I got that notification, not the notification, because nobody, nobody says that, Carlos. You don't say, did you receive a notification button? Or not a notification button, but did you receive a notification from me today? No one talks like that. Um, no one speaks like that at all. But um, but I knew I got the notification today. I knew that the people who believed that OJ 
was innocent, was sad. I knew that football fans were going to be sad. I knew that people who saw OJ be the TV spokesperson, the business person was going to be sad. Um, I knew that his family uh, members and his kids were going to be sad. But I knew that the people who found, who thought he was guilty and still thinks he's guilty uh, was going to be celebrating today. So I knew that this live today um, was going to be very, very um, it was going to be very contrite in many different um, sectors today. So I said to myself, okay, you know that you cover the culture um, as is happening. So go live. Um, whoever wants to show up, they will show up. Um, if they don't, that's okay. I read live is for everybody, but I knew that, um, with this, with this news going live, that I had to go live. Like I said, if something is happening in the culture, and people are talking about it, we go live. Um, that's just my that's just my rule for me. So with this being so with that being said, um, here is the independent through Yahoo Yahoo News. And so there is Ron Goldman. There, Ron Goldman was twenty five. And Nicole Brown was 35 when they were both stabbed to death on June um, 12th, 1994. So, I, like I said, when I tell y'all, I know I knew nothing about OJ um, except for what has been said about him in media. I didn't know his football career. I didn't know any of that until the documentary OJ made in America. And so right here, um, the Goldman family attorney, Dave Cook, told the Independent that um, Simpson died without penance. That has already been said, but um, Mr. Cook said when people die without penance, it just it really means that they are stuck. It, it means they are really stuck, rather, sorry. Um, if they die without penance, they will still not see God, said Mr. Cook. Um... So right here, um, when reached by phone on Thursday, Nicole Brown's youngest sister, Tanya Brown, told the Independent that she had no comment to make on Simpson's death. So as you can tell, um, as you can tell, this is a very um, culturally froth day. Um, I'm sad for his family, too, um, because... Uh, Yolanda, you ain't never lied, child, because like I said, you know, when I got this, when I got this notification today at work, uh, there we go. when I got this notification at work today, I was, I was, I was doing what I do at work. And I was really thinking to myself, how am I going to cover this live? Because, like I said, I don't know all of O.J. Simpson. I really don't. Um, I know him for the murder trial. Um, I know him for his, you know, his takes on social media. And that's all I know of him. I only knew all of him through the O.J. Made in America. The five-part docuseries that was on FX and... Um, and on ESPN. So I said, okay, going into this, you're going to have to recognize that, first of all, there is a family. His children have lost a father. The grandkids have lost their granddad. So you have to recognize that. There are two victims that are no longer here that their family members still have and still have the pain through their souls about who O.J. Simpson is to them. And I had to and I had to remember that the people who believe that he is guilty are celebrating today. Um, there are people who believe he is innocent are saddened today. The sports world, because he did come from the world of football, they are 
they are in mourning of him because of his football accomplishments like i just read um the, the pro football hall of fame talked about his football career and his accomplishments um off the field but did not mention the uh, murder trial so i knew with all of those factors involved that this was going to be a very culturally froth um, virtual tour live today so do not go in being an expert not that i am an expert at anything um except me well media is what i do um you know giving soul to the news is what i do and understanding the humanity in our emotionality as a culture is what i do and so you know i always say let your mind be present let your spirit be available have the soul be open to what can be so i did not go into this researching um anything and everything um about oj's life um but what i did do was find as many different perspectives of people speaking on his passing to give you guys a full comprehension of how culturally froth today's event is in the culture um so i hope i'm doing it justice um like i said i do send love grace and space to his kids um and his grandkids because even though a lot of people believe that he is guilty that he is a murderer um you know he he does have kids he does have grandkids and they've lost somebody today i mean with kato kaylin um sent wishes out to the children and said and he said losing your father or losing a father is never easy so exactly there's no winners um here because nobody believes in murdering somebody and you know losing a losing a parent's not easy so uh i hope that i am being um I hope I'm being responsible with this live. I hope I'm being, um, I hope I'm being one with my energy with this live. And, and I hope I am, I hope I am focused within purpose with this live. Um, so yeah, so that's why I'm very just relaxed um cool and collected today um you know the prime time edition is more you know you know what it is you know that that legendary brainly energy that you guys have come to know and love and embrace so much um but i just said hey today is a cultural moment and you need to go live and cover it because that's what you do and uh so i hope i'm doing it well i hope i'm doing y'all well and i um, hope i'm doing the um, people who have given their perspective on it um i hope i'm giving the people who have given perspective on it, i hope i'm doing them um, a good job as well so welcome in everybody to bring these virtual tour live um, we are covering the fact that oj simpson um has passed away there is so much news today um like i said before the queen sheba um winter harris interview we'll be covering that tomorrow night um live y'all know i am the brother that brings that media with soul perspective and we are going to be covering it from a media angle um very heavy but we are also going to bring that soul that we do so well around here on this channel our channel um so please look forward to that tomorrow night um at 6 p.m Let me see if there is any YouTube videos right now um, covering this. Um, this came in at like 10.15 um, in the morning on my phone. So by the time 10.15 um, came, um, I am assuming 
Yeah, I'm, I'm assuming that um, that Good Morning America today and CBS Mornings went off the air. Of course, um, you know, all the streaming services, um, ABC News Live, NBC News Now, um, CBS, um, probably Fox Nation, um, which is Fox News streaming service, uh, will be covering it. Um, let me type in OJ Simpson. Let's see what pulls up. up. Um, MSNBC um, has covered it, so. ESPN, so I'll, so I'll just show y'all real quick. Real quick. Just do this. All right, so here is, so when I typed in OJ Simpson, um, this is what I had here. Um, Fox News has covered it. Um, Sports Center right there has covered it. Um, nope, didn't mean to do that. Why did not let me? Oh, there we go. Um, OJ Simpson passed away at 76. Um, Harvey Lemon right there. Which Eisen. We'll see if we can play Rich Eisen because Rich I and Rich Eisen for those of you who, for those of you who don't know, um, he worked with a brother named Stuart Scott. Um, for those of you who don't know who Stuart Scott is, um, he is one of the most legendary broadcasters in the world at um, ESPN. Um, hashtag cooler than cooler than the other side of the pillow. Um, so a great, great sports um legend mind and just perspective that rich eisen is so hopefully we can play him and be okay you know what i mean because you two can be extra when you're just trying to cover the news um so this was four hours ago so this just came up to them um so let's see we'll play the, we'll play the view here Entertainment Tonight has covered it as well. So you see that, you know, there are people covering it. Of course, Megan Kelly covered it. We get, nobody gives a fuck about her. I'm sorry. Like, really? Like, she, like, she, <sighs> Megan Kelly didn't like Jolene. I'm like, does Megan Kelly like anybody? I'm sorry. I feel like she, I feel like somebody's existence could piss off. <laughs> Megan Kelly, I'm sorry. I just, I can't. Um, as y'all see, many people are speaking here, so um, let's see here. Let, let's go to the view if we can. Um, so here it is. Here. All right, here we go. Here's the view, everybody. Just before we went on air today, news broke that OJ Simpson has passed away at age 76. OJ is He good. was uh, battling cancer and uh, he's passed. So we didn't want you to sort of not know because we just got it. So yeah. we're passing and it on to you. I, I, can, can I just say that, you know, I just, who doesn't remember the trial of the century? You know, I mean, it was an 11 month long trial. Before, that's something the white car, that's, the white car, and, the, and the Bronco. And, and I think it's one of those questions. Where were you at when OJ was in that Bronco? I remember I was at Cafe Figueroa with on a date with a guy named Paul. You know? <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah, I remember it. And I also remember feeling um, a great sense of injustice happened. It's one of the reasons why I became a prosecutor because I remember watching Chris Darden. I remember watching uh, Marsha Clark. I remember watching the, the great late Johnny Cochran and just the masterful job that I thought everyone did. And um, I ended up becoming close to Kim Goldman. Um, and I can tell you that even after- Her son was killed. Right? Uh, the, his, her brother. Her brother, her brother Ron, her, Ron. Her brother Ron was killed um, along with Nicole Simpson. And um, I remember how palpable even to this day that loss is for what the family. What was the tragedy part? 
Well, you? For, for me, the tragedy was the injustice, in my opinion. Which part? Which injustice? The criminal trial. The, the fact in, that he was not found guilty. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, I but see. he was found liable later, yeah. yes. civilly. Like Trump is found liable for rape. Yes, he was. He was the same thing. Whoa! Everything goes back to Trump. Whoa! Uh, he, he, okay. Uh, oh, oh. I will not rest. Liable for sexual okay. assault. Okay, Joy. Okay, that was a little, a little much there. It's really a, a big deal. I think hey, TV may have sort of come into um, existence because of it. Well, yes, I couldn't believe when I looked up that it was 94. I was yeah. five years old, and I remember watching oh God, it. My parents feel old. No, my parents had it on wall to wall. It really was. It consumed so much of our public consciousness. I remember that in Princess Diana's death. It was yes. just, like, ingrained in me. And to me, when some someone like this passes, my really my only thought is I hope it gives some peace to the family of the victims. Um, they did win the civil uh, suit after the fact, because I agree, I think it was a miscarriage of justice, but that doesn't make up for it. So I hope that it helps them to find some peace. Yeah. I think some right. even saying their names matters. Yeah, yeah Ron Goldman, Nicole Simpson. Yeah. I yeah. mean, you know, the, these people are, are terribly missed by their families. And I, and I know I know that. Too. I remember because Johnny Cochran was a, um, uh, how did it go? The glove. If it doesn't, if it doesn't fit, must to quit. you must acquit. So he brought poetry to the legal system. Yeah, yeah. That was a first. Was also, a master. Yeah. It was a Why do dermatologists so, work? You know, Joy. I'm just like, really, like, could you not have stuck to the prompt? Oh my Lord Jesus! Just like we, we're going from somebody that you know passed away. Um, that was, you know, on a murder trial to rape. I mean, just that's live TV, okay? Um, so here is um, Harvey Levin from um, TM. Actually, let me see. Can I do TMZ? Because it's always better when you do it from TMZ's point of view. Uh, let me see. Sorry, y'all. If y'all do see that cut out, um, just know I had to cut it out for the purposes of, you know, it is what it is. Um, All right, so let's go to Harvey Levin and see what he has to say. Here we go, y'all. Harvey Levin. Joining us. Uh, what, <laughs> you know, we, we haven't really had a chance to really speak um, because you were busy and we were busy here, but uh, your reaction uh, to this day coming, at which we kind of knew, we knew he was ill, um, but now that it has happened, your reaction. Well, I've just got a flood of reactions. Um, you know, I, I was um, attending the funeral of a dear friend, um, uh, this amazing guy who was an agent, but also has just been a friend for 30 plus years. Um, and I was sitting in, uh, in the synagogue waiting for the service to begin. And Charles, you texted me that OJ Simpson died. And just the counterpoint of Richard Liebner dying, who was just this remarkably amazing, kind, incredible man. And then O.J. Simpson at the same time. It was really hard to process. Um, but boy, did I have different reactions to the two. And uh, look, I, I, I'm uncomfortable talking to you about this because I don't have good feelings about O.J. Simpson. And, you know, you mentioned that he was found not guilty, which is true, uh, in the criminal case. He 
a civil jury found that he did indeed kill Ron Goldman and Nicole Brown Simpson and awarded more than $33 million, finding with by clear and convincing evidence that he acted with malice in doing so. So O.J. Simpson is a killer and um, has been judged by, uh, by a jury as such. And I, I have, you know, I have a bunch of reactions. I mean, the thing that I keep coming back to, and I know you talked about, you know, his movie career and everything else, and I had run into him before the murders, and he was a perfectly charming guy. But my reaction is that when he killed um, his ex-wife, Nicole, um, he left her on the doorstep, almost decapitated for her children to find her the next morning, you know, if it weren't for a, their dog that led another neighbor to the doorstep, the kids would have gone stairs and seen their mother dead on the uh, on the porch. And I can't get that image out of my head because I've seen the autopsy pictures. So that is what defines O.J. Simpson to me. Um, I, I, I I also have this feeling, and Charles, I don't know if we've ever really talked about this, but O.J. Simpson really helped me understand the concept of celebrity. Because for so long after the trials, I was just amazed and angered, you know, as my friend Dominic Dunn was, who covered this trial, that O.J. Simpson became kind of a folk hero to a lot of people that in Las Vegas, he, you know, a st steady yeah. stream of people would come up to him wanting to take pictures with him. Right. And I couldn't understand it. It just, I couldn't process it. Now I can. That infamy and fame have blended so in our society that there is no distinction between the two. And O.J. Simpson taught me that lesson. Yeah, Harvey, what you just said, it's so true that, because a after the, the, the criminal trial and after the civil trial, he really wasn't, he wasn't out and about in public as much, right? I mean, we'd see him golfing and stuff like that, but he wasn't out in public. And then when he got out of prison, it's almost like he realized what you just said, that infamy and, and fame are kind of the same thing and you're gonna be treated the same way because once he got to Las Vegas, he was not hiding. No, he was not. Hiding from, from the spotlight. At all, and he was celebrated. He was yeah. celebrated by was. people who came to Las Vegas. He was. Harvey, a, do you think he was? Do you think he was celebrated, or were people in a macabre sense sort of wanting to have a moment with OJ so that they could then go and say, "Oh, I got a photo with OJ. Or, or I talked to OJ." Or there, I, I'm sure I, there were some I, people I who were I, celebrating I, him, but I don't think that was. I think most of them were yeah. doing it for the macabre reason that this is a man I, who killed two people, and here I am taking a photo with him. You know, it's sort of like, you know, an outlaw in the wild, wild west who became famous, a Jesse James type or whatever. That I don't think it was, oh my God, this is a macabre moment. I think they looked at this guy and said, oh my God, look how famous he is. Everybody knows O.J. Simpson. I'm gonna take a picture with him. And I think especially over time, um, it started to blur, and then eventually it didn't matter to people. And people don't remember Ron Goldman, and uh, they don't remember Nicole Brand Simpson. They remember O.J. Simpson, and they know his fame. And that's why I say infamy and fame have blurred to the point where they're one and the same. Right. I want to say one other thing, that as much as, you know, I have these strong feelings about O.J. Simpson, I also think that the there was an injustice done to him in this kidnapping trial for which he served prison time because i feel like in that case the judge was basically trying to do the justice that wasn't done in the murder case and that sentence made no sense to me so even though i had strong feelings and no he killed these two people um i felt that that prison sentence for what he had done in las vegas in that hotel room was unfair but it, you know, no one was going to feel sympathy for sympathy him, right? for him at that point because I think most people felt as you do that he uh, that he did kill them, and so who's going to get yeah, you know what as, I mean? Like as, who's going to feel? As, and I know the justice system isn't supposed to work that way, and that's what you're talking about. Yeah, but. as a lawyer, I, I as a lawyer, I really felt 
that an injustice in that case was done, even though I felt also felt that an injustice was done in the criminal trial. Right. Um, but that said, a jury clearly ruled he killed these two people. So, um, and I have no doubt about it. Again, I covered it. Let me, let me answer this real quick. Braylon, do you feel that this will be triggering to people? You know, I I do feel that this will be triggering to people. Um, and like I said, I really debated on going um, live with this um, because I know that there are many people who um, feel the way that they feel about OJ, right? Um, but I, I want y'all to know completely from Braylon Lee here that I did not do this live to trigger people on purpose at all. Um, I did this live to culturally let you all who remember OJ um, have your say um, on OJ, right? And to mark this down as a day in history because you see all of um, the people talking about, right? Well, he was not found guilty in the criminal. He was found guilty in the civil. So we're, we're fa April showers. We're factual over here. So just just to let you know. Um, but that is not my uh, comment. I do appreciate that. That's not my. Um, that's not my intention. Yolanda is to trigger people with this. Um, if anything, it is to give a overall comprehensive um, overview of the emotionality that is happening on today um so i know that you know this live may not really be um watched on the replay um that strongly um oh you meant overall nothing against you you're doing an absolute great job reporting the hot topics thank you so much um i do think i, I do i do think that it will be triggering overall i do um, like I said, there are people who feel, and Yolanda, I, I'm going. I'm going to uh, not Yolanda. I'm sorry, um, April. I'm going to refer to your comment. You said it. I quote. Now, this is alleged. This is this is April Showers Network comment. This is not Braylon Lee saying this. That April Showers Network said there was a man who confessed to the murders, and that there was no evidence linking OJ to the murder. No DNA. So that is April Showers network's comment that is april showers network comment that's not my comment that's not nikki news that's not um yolanda cameron's that's not um lady b's that's not swamp talk louisiana chicks that's not sheila williams comment that is april showers network comment um and i say and 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 i say that because um what happens on youtube is well it happened on your channel that means you with it no no, it's not. I am allowing the facts to be the facts. Okay. Um, like I said, this will be triggering overall because, like I said, hey, Lynette Stiller, welcome in. Um, this will be triggering overall um, because there are people who believe that he is guilty of doing the murders, like Harvey Levin. Um, that no, no, it's all good. It is all good, Lady B. It's all good. Um, there are people that believe that he was found guilty of murdering Nicole Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman, that they are rejoicing today. There are people who believe that he is innocent, that are sad today. There are people in the sports world um, that are more in the loss of a great legend. There are people who worked with him in media that are, that are losing um that they are mourning today and his children and grandchildren are mourning so there is a lot of emotionality that is triggering everybody um you know what i mean and like i said my rule is that you know un, un, if something is important enough that i feel needs to be talked about or is going to be talked about in the culture i go live on thursdays I will go live on Sunday. Well, Sunday we've been doing Sassy Score, um, which I love. That's um, me, Sassy TV from the AO3 and Lil Paulette. Um, love those two queens right there. 
um so sunday thursdays and saturdays you know i usually don't go live unless i feel it's something important and it keeps me um it, it keeps my foundation my barometer and my um soul frequency um in check in tune and in rhythm. so i am giving y'all full comprehensive review of the emotionality so that when you know this day something did happen because we cannot wake up and be like oh the world is fine today well that per well there was a, a whole power well everything is fine though that was just a power power no we have to recognize the whole world not just the parts we want to see so thank you um yolanda cameron for um your um excellent question that was an excellent question and thank you for the um love as well all right y'all back to harvey levin he is giving his take on um oj simpson's complicated legacy and then we're going to li listen to legendary rich eisen you are live with me Ray lee the legendary um tourist in the words of alf mc um the legendary um vir the virtual travelers the virtual for family if you want to join us just hit that subscribe button um and hit and hit the all bells so that way you'll be notified when i go live or upload a video all right back to harvey Levin, everybody every minute of that trial and not just the trial i covered it from the day it happened and i have you know i have doubts about lots of things where i'm not certain anymore about much i'm certain about that uh two things uh ron before we let you go uh ron goldman um his father fred goldman uh, his reaction, he told people, was that he wasn't thinking about O.J. Simpson today, uh, that he was focusing on his son, focusing on Ron, and realizing just how long it has been uh, since they lost Ron uh, at O.J.'s hands. You're, the fact you know, that... So I, 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 I got to tell you something. I was thinking about Ron today, too. Um, when I was sitting in the, in the funeral service, um, I, I, I was thinking Ron would be in his mid fifties now. And I just thought, wow, that guy whose life was taken when he was so young and vibrant, um, would be, you know, getting up there in age and he was robbed of that. So that's interesting. I was thinking of Ron myself. Yeah. And, and uh, interesting that, you know, and believe me, Fred Goldman, that, and that you said the 33 million OJ didn't pay the, the lion's share of that. Right. I mean, that money is still owed to the Goldman family. And it was protected. The money was protected the way it was structured. You know, part of it was his NFL pension and part of it was the way his pension, you know, with his financial advisors was um, was constructed. But yeah, he um, he really paid virtually nothing in this case. But again, you know, for Fred Goldman and, 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 and the fact that OJ Simpson attacked Fred Goldman called him money grubbing and all sorts of other things i wish yeah. i wish my friend dominic dunn were still around because i'd just love to have that conversation with him today because it was just awful awful yeah uh one last thing you know uh oj the tweet that went out said that he was surrounded by his children and grandchildren uh when he passed do you think there's any chance that he made some sort of confession um, on his deathbed. A deathbed confession? Absolutely not. O.J. Simpson, from everything I know, and I feel, you know, th th there was a lot of psychology that went into this trial where you had to understand the mindset and beyond after the trial. Um, I believe O.J. Simpson had constructed a world in which he didn't do it and that he had convinced himself that he didn't do it. And that world was, had pushed away the reality. So I absolutely, positively do not believe there was any deathbed confession here. Mm. Yep. Okay. I, I, would, I would be wow. absolutely shocked if, why would he at this point, you know? Um, Harvey, thanks so much for being with us, man. And um, safe travels back. Thanks guys, appreciate it. Wix is your platform to that is Harvey Levin. We are going to go to Rich Eisen here. Um, 
actually real quick. You know what? We'll go Rich Eisen and then we'll take a commercial break. All right, y'all. Here is Rich Eisen. Here we go. Shortly before we went on the air, news broke that O.J. Simpson had died at the age of 76. And um, clearly, you, you cannot talk about O.J. Simpson without mentioning him being acquitted of, uh, uh, of a double murder in the 1990s that changed absolutely everything in, in the world of uh, media, in our world, in the United States of America, the way that we view celebrity, the way that we view uh, criminal cases, the way that we view justice, the way that we view everything. And I will never forget uh, where I was on the day that O.J. Simpson was on the run from the police here in Southern California. And I will never forget that day as long as I live. And uh, I was graduating from the Medill School of Journalism in uh, June of 1994 on this day when uh, my folks um, were there for the graduation. So was my brother, sister-in-law. Um, and we were all out to lunch, uh, a late lunch for, with um, uh, a fellow colleagues of mine who just graduated from Medill. And we were in a bar and, um, and uh, having lunch and up came the images. And it was in the middle of an NBA finals game between the Knicks and the Spurs. Yeah. And the Rockets, pardon me, the Knicks yeah, and the Rockets. Knicks Rockets. Um, yeah, and yeah, Knicks and Spurs is when I turned 30. <laughs> um, so <laughs> I, I will never forget that series. Because it was of interest in Chicago, to be honest, you were where, where I was because everybody thought had Michael not retired, they would have been in that series. Um, and the Knicks finally got past the, the Jordanless Bulls. And um, there was a split screen. And you just couldn't believe the guy who you knew as one of the all-time great running backs in the history of the NFL. And you couldn't believe that the guy that you now knew as a sideline reporter for NBC Sports and uh, a movie actor. The guy from the Hertz commercial who was trying first to make his man. flight, right? Jumping one of the most famous the pitchmen. Yeah. Jumping over, he was jumping over um, chairs in the airport. Yeah. Yeah, to go make his flight yeah. that that guy uh was on the run from the police and why would he run from the police if he was innocent and so we were all grappling with the fact that this guy it, it sure looked like he had just killed his wife and a waiter from a nearby restaurant who was friendly with his wife and uh, was returning, I guess, a pair of glasses, as we learned later on. Yeah. Wrong place, wrong time. Ron Goldman, may he rest in peace as well. Lord, it seems like it, right? With Nicole Brown Simpson. And uh, I'll never forget where I was that day. I think we all, if you're old enough. Yeah, you right? I remember? Yeah, I was in a bar in Pittsburgh. Um, walk in and I'm like, why is, this, why is the game not on? What? what? Yeah. And then we just, all huddled around this thing like in disbelief right and he was and and he was on the phone al cowlings was in was in his driving, friend was in the car with him and driving, and, yeah. and 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 he was saying suicidal things yeah. it was crazy it was crazy and you, it, 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 the every every news organization had broken in live broken. and on and then the police didn't want to stop him they just kept they kept <laughs> following him they just followed him see where he was going yeah. and folks were on the freeway like cheering him on too it was weird well, yeah, the I, fact he, that people had time to make signs and yeah. get to certain locations yeah. that was that was especially now that i live here back then california was just like a, right. whatever right. i didn't Same. believe it was a real place but to think that in this type of traffic people could get to these spots make yeah. signs and hold Wasn't them he up, gonna like, go to mexico and they turned around because well, he wanted to go home first the, 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 there was a there was money and and, yeah, and had, a disguise in there cash, right and clothes had, like, gone yeah it was it was just I was in the eighth grade and uh, a friend of mine was over to watch the NBA finals. And remember they went, they went small box, small box. Right. on the finals. On the game. And then the, the larger uh, view was the chase. The chase. And then Bob Costas so, is pic doing so the picture game, and going picture. back and forth. I think it was Marv doing the game. And Bob was doing the, Bob was doing the, the studio. studio. Studio, yeah, yeah. 
But on and occasion, Marv, it was and then they threw it back. Like, and Brokaw was, threw it back to yeah, Marv, and crazy. Marv is just like, "We will update you as conditions warrant." Pause. We're here in the third quarter in Madison Square Garden, and it was just it weird was and crazy. Yes, wild yeah. that and 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 everyone started calling everyone else or speaking to everyone else, saying, "Did you see what OJ's doing?" Like OJ yeah. killed his wife, yeah. I was and somebody bar. else. Because again, why DJ. else would he be running exactly. from the law? And the crazy thing is when the trial hit, they hardly brought up the chase. Right. Was one of my memories, because I watched the preliminary hearing every minute of it in Lance Ito's courtroom. And you remember SNL would be doing skits on it. And yeah. didn't Jay Leno have like the dancing Ito's dancing on, on yeah. the Tonight Show? Yeah. And, um, and that's when the ticker, the bottom line ticker was born because CNN kept giving updates, updates on other news because they didn't want to break away from the non-stop 24-7 right. right. coverage of it. And that's when, um, you know, um, Roger Cossack and Greta Van Susteren became yes. famous because they were legal experts to tell us about everything that yeah. was going on. And, and people figured out what DNA was. It was our first experience with that. Right. And so um, – the preliminary trial, once I graduated from the Medill School of Journalism, I took an internship on the, at the CBS Evening News in New York City. I lived at the 92nd Street Y for the summer and took two trains to Black Rock every day to go to work and answer phones uh, on the set of the CBS Evening News with Dan Rather and Connie Chung. Wow. And basically my summer was filled with watching the preliminary trial with Lance Ito and uh, answering phones of people livid across the country to give me, uh, to tell me three things. One, OJ is guilty. Two, OJ is innocent. Three, where is the price is right or my soap opera? <laughs> oh they my were like complaining God. like, why are we covering this thing gavel to gavel? Yep. What, where where is the price is right where is my soap opera and i'm like i i would just transfer them to some other line for that because the phones were ringing off the hook it was crazy. i, I will never crazy. ever the country forget it it really and is. so just to bring this kind of full circle a little bit here is because you cannot talk about oj simpson without mentioning the double murder in brentwood california of his wife and the waiter ron goldman you cannot do that unless of course you're the heisman trust who tweeted out today you know they mourn the passing of oj simpson we extend his our sympathy to his family and again you know there this man did pass away to cancer and 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 obviously somebody dying is not something to celebrate but how do you not mention, and if you're Reggie Bush and you see that, you're like, oh, he's got his Heisman. But, you know, where's mine? Because OJ did serve 12 years for something completely unrelated to this. Right. That's one thing to say. But we have to remember Correct. the families affected. Absolutely. And in that regard, a reporter from NBC News Daniel Arkin and reached out to Ron Goldman's dad, Fred, who was, by the way, the Goldman family was the face of yep. of um, yes, they were the normalcy amidst the maelstrom of insanity that this his family had lost their son. Well, then the civil trial that filed exactly followed and the quote from Ron Goldman's father, Fred about the passing of oj quote the only thing i have to say is it's just further reminder of ron being gone all these years it's no great loss to the world it's a further reminder of ron's being gone and i just wanted to mention that to finish our conversation on this subject matter catch the rich eisen show every single day on the roku channel 12 to 3 eastern for free so with that being said, um, we are going to take a little break and we'll be back right after this. You are watching Virtual Tour Live, Braylon Lee's Virtual Tour Live. We'll be back right 
after this. Roll it! For years, people have been singing all about my chicken. Love that chicken for Popeyes! Nobody has a love affair with chicken like you do with my slow marinated hand breaded Popeyes bonafide chicken. And right now it's Love That Chicken Month at Popeyes with two big pieces and a biscuit for just $2.99. So what are you waiting for? Come get some of my world famous chicken and raise your mighty voices. Love That Chicken for Popeyes. Free. Things have been a little quiet around here. We've missed the fun, we've missed the excitement, we've missed the entertainment, we've missed the nightlife, but most of all, we've missed you. We're getting rid. Caesar's Rewards. We can't wait to welcome you back. Things have been a What is this feeling that everyone's feeling? Ding, ding, ding. With such feeling. Ding, ding, ding. This winning feeling. Ding, ding, ding. This tingle of success. Ding, ding, ding. This sensation of triumph. Ding, ding, ding. This sensation. Oh, I can feel it. This season, everyone gets the winning feeling. Win guaranteed prizes like 250 grand and more. Only at Dave and Buster's. Copeland's. Copeland's is not just some fancy place for your big night out. In fact, there's no occasion too big. Or if you like, too small. Copeland's. There's always something good. Welcome to Copeland's. back welcome back in the brain leads virtual tour live hopefully your day is going well today on a good old thursday that is um we are here talking about um a very cultural um moment that is happening right now right from the space right here right now um oj simpson has passed away um due to pancreatic cancer and um the reaction has been um palpable it has been diverse and is definitely mixed um to say the least so we've been on the highways and byways and the possibilities of what can be of this virtual tour live for one hour 34 minutes and 22 seconds really analyzing giving context 
and really giving perspective of how deep um, this day is to so many people. And um, I've been trying my best and hopefully I've been doing my best to um, give it to you real straight laced and all with soul. So with that being said, I'm going to turn my camera now because I've done the whole show for over an hour. So that is where we are now. Y'all do see um, that, you know, if things now, usually if you're if you're if you are a content creator, you will get a notification um, from um, Google YouTube that you have to um, that, you, that you have to cut out things and stuff like that. Um, just know, um, that they give you the option to do that. Um, but, um, if you do see anything cut out, it's because they told me, because there'll be times where if you, if, if you don't, then your video will not be seen by anybody on YouTube. Um, so if you do see things cut out of this particular live, just know it's because of that. But I wanted to play those videos um to give you guys the full perspective of this very significant um cultural moment so um, i hope i've been doing that and um yes like i said um tomorrow morning at 11 a.m um have a jam-packed show for you let me show you that we're still we're still live on tour i'm not into the show um Let me show y'all that show there. MP2 Ross, welcome in. Glad to have you here. Um, so we got Aoki Lee Simmons, Ice Spice, Haley Bailey, Ed the White, Showtime, um, and Lunchable. So that will be coming to you live at 11 a.m. tomorrow morning, then at 6 p.m. Uh, will be the Winter Harris and Queen Sheba um, interview after show. I will be reviewing the whole um, interview live, so look forward to that. Um, yes, Rip OJ for sure. Um, there, are, like I said, it's a it's a very contentious day for um, a lot of people. Um, you know what I mean? That um, there are some people that are happy that he's passed today. Um, there are some people there are some people that are sad today so trying to recognize all the emotionality um upon this day today so um so yeah so and of course you guys know um tomorrow night as well not only will we get into um now we get into the interview but we will also be talking about Love and Marriage Huntsville because the cash flow came out and there is a new couple added. So we will definitely be getting into that um, for sure. So trust me, um, I did not forget about Queen Sheba's interview. Um, but I definitely wanted to give that its own um, live. And plus now that too, I believe in the power of, um, I believe in the power in taking information. And I want to be, I want to be able to take in uh, Queen Sheba's interview um, responsibly, fairly, and accurately. Um, because one of the things that they talked about was the payment of the cast and how much they get paid. And so, you know, like I said, tomorrow night, um, I'll be giving my full thoughts. And y'all know I'm that media nerd on YouTube. Uh, and so, I would definitely give it that perspective tomorrow night and then of course the season finale of Sharnita's world will be on at nine hopefully please please it would be so wonderful um but if not you know hey we'll take it as it comes as we have done for every episode um for sure so so yeah i'm gonna drop the link if anybody wants to come up i know you all may be very comfortable um you know what i mean but of course just want to make sure you guys know that you guys do have a voice on this channel here um and like, like i said today is a very it, it's 
this this live i don't know how it's going to be um i don't know how it's going to be received um in the algorithm um because all i did was just put oj since oj simpson has passed away um so i hope that it's received well um for the coverage of the story for the perspectives but most of all for the soul um of how we are talking about this story so so yeah the link is pinned if you guys um want to come on up there so how has y'all thursday been hopefully it's been good So I feel like I've talked about everything, so I'm going to leave a poll in the chat. I'm just going to leave a poll here um, because I don't know. I mean, at, at the, after this, I really don't know. Like, we've, we've talked about everything, honestly. Um, and, I, and, and you know what? I'll say this. Um, whenever you do a live like this where you focus it on one singular topic, um it can be difficult right it definitely can be difficult because it doesn't give you any leverage to you know move around but i also do deep dives you know what i mean i do deep dives on you know topics that people are talking about so but yeah oh that's right y'all by the way um by the way, y'all, um, Chit Chat is interviewing Sharnita and Jason Horn at 8 p.m., y'all. By the way, I almost forgot to tell y'all about that. Actually, let me, I don't think Chit Chat would mind me promoting her. I don't think she would mind. Give me one moment, y'all. Chit Chat with QT. Hang on. Live. Yep, right here, y'all. So let me pull it up. Share screen. So right there, a live interview with the horns of their hit um, reality show, uh, Sharnita's World. Um, she has Hue TV um, Network. I'm guessing that's where she got the interview from, not Nubian um, TV. So that is happening in 15 minutes and 45 seconds there. Um, thank, thank you, Yolanda. Um, and you know what? Here's the thing, y'all. Um, for everybody who may say, Braylon, you're not a journalist. Thank you for letting me know. 
okay? My original major was broadcast journalism. But I recognized that my voice um, had a little more soul than just for reading a prompter. And I wanted to be able to expand my perspective of not just covering news, not just relating news, but actually having a conversation about news. So I am a social commentator with a radio background that loves to give soul to everything that deserves to matter. And things that may not matter, guess what? It's our job to find out why it should. Or maybe if it don't matter, let's find out why so we can stay away from it. <laughs> but um, oh, thank y'all so much. Oh, y'all so y'all are so sweet. Um, 33% for high topics. Um, I don't know, Bray. I thank y'all for that. <laughs> I thank y'all for that so much because I'm just like, where do we go from here? Like, this was a very somber live. Like, I, ah, uh, and then 33% uh, percent just here to support which I so, so appreciate. You know, if anything, I hope that this shows why we need black journalism. Um, why we need black journalists, why we need journalism schools. Um, you know, that BET commercial um, that Lady B loves so much, I feel that this show harkens back to that BET commercial of, you know, we got laughs, we got love, we got you know, entrepreneurship, we got you. And so I hope that this show, I hope the show got you, that we got you in anything and every topic that's happening in your life. I hope that we are, I hope that we are creating a reflection of what's happening, not just a portrayal for content. Um, and I hope we're doing it well over here. I really, really do. Um, But yeah, so. I got to reset my phone because Swamp, Swamp Talk with Louisiana Chick is on right now as well. Um, y'all subscribe to her as well. Hang on me. Let me give her some shine here. Hang on here. Give me a moment. We'll tune in for a little bit of Swamp Talk Louisiana chick. She's having a good time over there. I'm not mad at her. Oh, you're not even seeing it. Hang on. So here she is here. Swamp Talk with Louisiana Chick. OJ passes away. Um, Dalton Mayer under fire. Funky warmed up back on her messy-ish. And content creator beef. So she has a jam-packed show there. Um, once again, I will drop the link for um, Swamp Talk with Louisiana Chick. I'm a great, great soul for sure. So y'all support her. And um, let me get to the... And thank you, lady. I try to be child. I really do. <laughs> and you know what? If anything, I think that, you know, if a fire is already going... Why add lighter fluid to it? You know what I mean? Um, I hope that this kind of brings some, I hope this kind of brings a water hose to some people of like, wow, okay, you know what? Th this cultural moment did happen. And here's a video showcasing the perspective on it and be done. And um, I think we should have, I think we should have more, um, not just content, but I think we should have more new,
do shows like this where it's like okay here is what is happening in real time as good as we can give it to you and we just let you have at it so um so yeah See, nobody wants to come up. That's totally fine, child. Because I think, I think I'll be here until eight o'clock, and then I'm probably going to head over to. Um, well, I'm gonna try. I'm a tr- child. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to be supportive of everybody. So, um, I'll probably over there with Swamp Talk Louisiana chick, and then in my, um, then on my phone I'll have, um, I'll have chit chat with QT on. I'm supporting her. So. But yeah, like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed the sh- tonight's show. Um, and you look, you see right here, I know the white people happy OJ gone. You see what I mean? You see what I mean? <laughs> so, you know, we can't, we can't sit here and not recognize that today is a day where everybody feels away, right? So, um, with that being said, let me get the great, the Daily Motivator up for you all. Cause y'all know we always we all after we cover the mess of the impossible and cover the rise of the possible, we always end it with some positivity. Um, so yeah, let me get that up for y'all. If you want to succeed, you should, you should strike out on new paths rather than travel the worn paths of accepted success. John D. Rockefeller. All right now. It is time for the Daily Move for Thursday, April 11th, 2024. Rise to the occasion. Um, Rise to the occasion of your challenges. Rise to the occasion of your opportunities. Face the reality of the situation you're in with grace, with purpose, with courage. Create value, fulfillment, and worthwhile experience as the moments pass. Take an active role and make a positive difference in the unfolding of life there's good you can do today right here right now make the effort go to the trouble learn from what works well and what doesn't speak the truth endeavor to better understand and offer kindness wherever you can choose choose today what you'll continue tomorrow to be thankful for choosing do what adds enduring richness and not not near not merely what creates monetary satisfaction or momentary satisfaction I'm sorry respect and value the miracle that is your life that is all of life rise to the occasion and give it your best Ralph Wilson mm. Woo! man rise to the occasion let's talk about it right I think rising to the occasion is how you carry yourself, right? I think with today, with so much news happening, including this this very cultural moment, um, there are many ways to rise to this occasion. You can rise in celebrating this. You can rise in um, being sad about it. There's so many ways to rise, but you have to be responsible for how you rise to the occasion. Um, To me, I have a, you know, for me, rather, I have a phrase that I use on Clubhouse um, in my description whenever we are going to talk about something very heavy. I would say match the energy or catch your energy and stay gone. And I say that because you need to check your energy. Um, You need to check your energy filter. You need to check your energy tank. That's what I'm going to say. You need to check your energy tank. How much energy do you have in you and what are you willing to give? So when you're talking about rise to the occasion, how much is in your tank for what you're going through at that time and how important is it to you? So that's the first thing. The second thing I would say from this, make the effort, go to the trouble, learn from what works well and what doesn't. We have to recognize that there is lessons from work from what doesn't work. If you ever watch the movie Robots, 
Uh, Robots is such a classic movie. It has one of the most legendary voices who's no longer here, the legendary Robin Williams. And it's this guy named Rodney, and he's a young inventor. And his hero is Big Well. And um, you know, at Big Well Industries, it's about creativity. And modernization comes through. And you know, Big Weld、um, wants to get back to that, but there's a fight.、Um, if you want something in your life to matter, you have to recognize that sometimes what's not working well may not be working well because it doesn't work. If you're willing to learn from what doesn't work, you will be able to figure out what can work. I think the final thing I will say to you all is give it, to give it your best. That doesn't mean that is going to be your best when you give it your best. Oh, I did one hundred percent. Now you're going to feel some type of way about it. I could have done this. I should have done that. Do y'all know when Michael Jackson did the moonwalk during the Motown Fifty、um, celebration? He was so upset. Because he did not stand on his tippy toes long enough after doing the moonwalk, the king of pop, or as Elizabeth Taylor would say, the king of pop, rock and soul, felt that he failed himself, while the world saw him as a success. What you think may be bad may be good to others. You're going to make mistakes in giving your best, but as long as the totality of you is always about giving your best energy, that you are giving your best. So, with that being said, everybody, thank you all so so much. Like I said, at eight o'clock coming up in three minutes and ten seconds will be a live interview with Chit Chat with QT and the Hortons. And right from this space, right here, right now, is my girl Swamp Talk Louisiana Chick three one eight there. So two great content creators live, and then of course, I think Wente Talks is still live, if I'm not mistaken.、Um, Sassy just went off.、Um, there we go. Um, yes,、yeah, Sassy just went off. Let me see here.、Um, and yes, and Wente Talks just went off as well. So yes, Chit Chat with QT and Swamp Talk Louisiana Chick are live right now. So with that being said, it's time for the best outro on YouTube. Know what you do and do what you know. Never say you want more special because you are always more blessed. And trust, you may not be where you want. Oh、uh, wait! Know what you do and do what you know. Never say you want more special because you are always born blessed. And trust, you may not be where you want to be, but by the end of it, you'll be where you need to be. Do what you've been chosen to do. Why is one thing to call yourself is another thing to be chosen. One love, much love, all love. I have spent time with you. You have spent time with me. I hope we've all spent time together. We're rising to be great together. And always remember where you're doing radio, television, YouTube, living your best life, or just trying to navigate. A day that is different in the eyes of every beholder. Make sure the replays not just for if you watch it, not just for if you listen to it, but for you watch the spirits again. I love you. I value. I embrace you all. Always remember or receive love. You gotta give it or receive love. You gotta give it or receive love. You gotta give it. Whatever obstacles you have overcome, whatever successes you have achieved on this particular day, I am extremely proud of you. But no one else is proud. You be proud of your damn self. And finally, y'all. It's still the beginning of April. Okay, can we please, can we please just not add drama to the timeline? That's all I ask. By the way, two content creators alive right now. That is, so I'm talking Louisiana Chick three one eight, and in one minute, I mean one damn minute, literally under fifty seconds, will be a live interview with the Horns. With chit chat with QT, one love, much love, all love. I feel the love. I said right back to you. Enjoy the fireworks for the day that was, for the day, for the day that's to come, and for the blessings that are on the way for you, me, 
and all of us as a society, as a people, as a culture. I'm gonna give y'all fire, um, a commercial break in fireworks. I feel the love. I said right back to you. Chit chat with QT, literally coming up now. And Swamp Talk with Louisiana Chick is on right now. I love you all. Good night, everybody. See y'all tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. Bye. I finally did it. Popeye's new chicken sandwich. Mm. I've been trying to make the perfect chicken sandwich forever. Um, how does that make you feel? You know me. It had to be just right. Mm -hmm. Finding a bun as good mm. as my chicken was not easy. Mm. I mean, I did it, obviously. I think we've made a lot of progress here. I feel great. Good talk. Mmm. I'm proud of you. My new chicken sandwich is buttermilk battered and served on toasted brioche. Try it in spicy or classic. Love that chicken from Popeye. I finally did it. Hey, grab me one too. This is for all you multi-talented, multitasking, multi-everything people out there. Take it away. Find your glory, write your story, feel this beat will carry you. Time you own it, take your moment, be a fire burning through. Hustling from night until morning, grinding it out, it won't be long. Feel your power, it's your hour, you inspire, you are strong. Enjoy your Zola. No applause. <laughs> You're all fired. <laughs> now that you've reached the stage in your life where quality television is important, Nubian TV is a black network that speaks to your lifestyle. Nubian TV is the world's first digital network devoted to the upscale and political lifestyles of black people. Nubian TV's programming includes politics, travel, fashion, food, automotive, arts and culture, civil rights, music, and more. Watch now on Amazon Fire TV, Roku, or watch globally at NubianTV.net. Nubian TV, it's what you want to watch. Caesar. Just look at him. Politician, general, author, ruler, man. Legend has it, he's not only stared into the belly of the beast, he's had it for dinner. Here he's free to relax, or party, or relax, or party, or relax, and party.
His is a world of opulence. Excess. And the occasional impulse buy. Not one to rest on his laurels, he's famous for ushering in a new age of entertainment. So, for anyone seeking a place where the sun never sets on a good time, all this awaits. I am Caesar, and I approve this palace. 